Between episodes, I had to do a bit of expanding to sort out copper. I did this in the laziest way possible by just chucking a box over the resource patch and sending trains out to grab it. While getting copper is great, I still have power woes. I just can't seem to get ahead of it. Despite growing the power massively, we still need over one gigawatt. So let's increase it over one gigawatt and see what happens. I finished building this landmass between episodes and some of you may have even seen it in the previous episode. Now, up until a few days ago, this was a great design, but with Space Age, it's probably not the best anymore. I created a set of blueprints that enable you to scale from a small reactor to this one, which produces over 1.4 gigawatts. It takes a massive amount of resources to build something like this, and it takes even longer for the robots to place the items. Yes, it runs off steam, but it does it a little bit different by putting the heat into a heat exchanger, which then heats up the water and converts it to steam, and then you end up pumping steam into the turbine instead. Now, pre-Space Age, this design was a little bit inefficient. You basically end up burning through all your uranium fuel when you can't actually leverage any more. So this design has a circuit network which attaches to the inserters for the fuel, which only allows one more fuel in when the steam stored in the tanks is below a certain limit. This makes it a lot more efficient than just constantly burning fuel. Finally, we loaded it with fuel, and as you can see, one of the reasons why it's inefficient, it takes a long time to warm up and get going. That lag is why you need to manage the fuel carefully, because it also stays hot for a while after the fuel is gone. You can see the little solar panel array at the bottom here. That's needed to just jumpstart the base because you need to have some power to get the pumps working and to get the inserters working and the robo ports. Without it, it won't actually start, but once it's running, it produces enough power to sustain itself. So we just get it up and get it working and then we connect it to the main base. Now it's connected, you can see the power is ramping up massively and you can also see where I have been struggling with power. A lot of the resourcing issues were actually caused by a lack of power to the mines and actually processing it all, so this all had a knock on impact. As we check the mines, you can see they're coming online again, and hopefully the base will jump into life. This uranium refinement setup is almost certainly enough to last us indefinitely at this size and scale. We just won't burn as much uranium as we create and we'll end up with a surplus at some point. Now logistics are back on, my robots are finally coming to sort out my inventory. And it's also worth noting that half the base is still not active. The furnaces aren't currently on, a lot of the assemblers aren't on. Any moment now, the trains will start bringing the resources in for the furnaces and we'll see the spike in power. As you can see, we now have over 1.5 gigawatts of power and we just need to add a switch to the old coal power system so it doesn't come on all the time and only when needed. We'll do this by putting down an accumulator and monitoring the capacity of it. If the accumulated charge drops below a certain threshold, this switch will connect to the old furnace power network and the demand for power will make the furnaces turn on, which will give us about 300 megawatts of buffer. One thing to bear in mind here is that if you see coal power coming on too frequently, it means you're running low on power and this can lead to the same situation I had earlier where you start running out of power and you can't get your base up and working properly. So to avoid that, make sure you make sure it's only supplementing your power and it's not actually carrying the excess you need. I've rebuilt the modules using beacons because we're going to need so many of them. It's going to be one of those processes that starts off slow and gets quicker as more and more modules are created. My hastily built copper mine expansion is attracting unwanted attention, so it's time to take the Spidertron out and do what it's good at, firing a barrage of rockets at biters, and importantly, not getting stuck on any trees. I can't imagine why that would be a problem. It's time to start making the RoboPort network a little bit larger and connecting it all the way out here. For one, we need ammo on the wall, but we also need repairs. This is really something I should have done sooner, but so far we have been getting away with it and running a massive line of RoboPorts just means my robots are stuck traveling. So I'm gonna need thousands more, but the factory must grow. I finally decided it was time to increase the capacity of the bus, and that starts with smelting. This smelting array is enough to fully saturate four blue belts. I also did the same for iron, and also expanded the base to the west quite a bit so I could get even more copper coming in. I still need to do with iron, because no doubt that's going to be the next problem. A brief interlude to fire rockets at these pesky trees so they can get out of our way and let us keep building rockets. 
We're going to create a little bus here to make all of the components we need to launch the rocket for space science. Now that's done, we're going to steal the module factory design and throw that down here. We're going to keep the whole of this section beaconed to increase the throughput. This should be fine now that we got power generation sorted. I created this simpler factory for low density structures. I'm also so glad we have robo ports, as building is so much easier now. I throw in the materials I need and decide to add the rocket control units after the modules as they more or less use the same ingredients. The only hard thing here is working how I'm going to take the resources off the belt because of how I've put them on. Now that we have the RCU scalable, it's time to fix that belt issue with pulling things off. As you can see here, it's quite messy and I don't have the continuation of red circuits on the bus. I don't think I need them for anything, but it grates me a little bit, so let's fix it. The simple fix was just to move the underground over and put a splitter in. This allowed the blue circuits to be taken off without throwing a filter on the splitter and losing all of the blue circuits off the bus. Not that we need them right now, but I'm happy with this. A slightly easier challenge to get copper off the bus and merge with iron. You can see I accidentally built batteries and accumulators off camera. You didn't really miss anything, and now it's onto solar panels. Luckily, this is as simple as dragging in a couple of belts and connecting them up. The only thing interesting here is how I make use of the inserters to place on the belt and get a full belt of solar and accumulators. And even that's not that interesting. Next up is rocket fuel. I spent way too much time working out where to place things for this and I ended up moving it all a few times. In short, I make solid fuel from the petroleum and send that into an assembler with light oil to make rocket fuel. I spent a little time working out how to make it tileable and then realized I needed to move all of the beacons again because I forgot I needed to take items out of the rocket fuel assemblers. What an idiot. With everything moved, it's now just copy and paste a few times, connect the light fuel and watch the magic. We need to take all of these outputs for the satellite and the silo, but that sound means we've got biter problems out of artillery ammo, out of red ammo, and no robo ports connecting all the way still. At least I can use the remote control on the Spidertron to get me there while I make a drink. I'm embarrassed to say that this long sequence of me working out how to route just four belts to one assembler probably took me the best parts of 10 minutes. At least I remembered I could put speed modules in. Now, the silo. We need some buffer chests for filling the silo to make it a little bit more efficient and again this took way too long to connect up, so let's skip it. Now that we have all the belts and beacons in place, I just need to remember to put the productivity modules in, which I did, but I forgot to record, honest. So let's focus on getting the white science packs out, and despite my brain building this stupid system, the rocket came online to distract me, seemingly resetting my brain and remembering that I should sideload white science out of the silo. Now we've connected up white sites to the research labs, we just need to get rid of this stupid satellite and put some real cargo in the rocket and then launch it. That is all it takes to finish Factorio. This was one of my longest runs for launching the rocket in Factorio, mainly because I built the bus. I'm normally much more of a fluid builder, but we're done and we need to get white science. So let's throw the satellite back down here, set the rocket to auto launch and watch the white science come rolling out of the silo. The white science has a long way to travel to get to the research labs, but I can just set the Spidertron to autopilot and kick back. As we're waiting for the space science, I'll take the opportunity to thank everyone for watching these. I started recording them back in May, but it's fair to say my life got a little bit hectic and in the way. I was hoping to build this into a mega base before Space Age launch, but clearly I missed that deadline. 
Instead I've decided to record a new series including Space Age. I don't know when it's going to come out but we'll start roughly from the same point we are here to save watching the same content again. I'll just do a one episode recap from scratch to whatever we build. The White Science really does take a while so you can watch it in the background. With that all said and done, I've been Sama Freak, you've been awesome and I'll see you in the next one. Once again, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's watched this small four episode series. It's done a lot better than I would have expected and it means a lot to me that you've all watched it and enjoyed it. If you are still watching at this point, I think it's fair to ask for a like and a subscribe and I'll hopefully have the new episodes out somewhere before the end of this year, hopefully soon as possible. Thanks once again. I'll see you in the next one.